this is the library class. Uh, that is the only class that we are looking at in this uh, video. It has a number of um, public static fields that are return values to method calls in user interface. So we will see them used um, all over the place, these return values. There are two instance fields, the catalog and member list. They are references to the singleton objects of type catalog and number list. The library itself is a singleton, so we have code for that. Okay. Now we have a sequence of methods that are called by user interface. They are not given in any particular order, so we will go through them as they appear in the source code. Add book. Given the title, author and ID, we create a book object and insert the book object into the catalog and return the book object. If there was any issue, we return now. A similar piece of code for the add member method, which is again called from user interface, given the name, address, and form, this creates a member object. And we add that member object to the member list and return the object. If there was an issue, we return null. Placing a hold, given a member ID, book ID, and duration, this looks for the book. If there is no such book, it returns book not found error. If uh, this was not issued, we know that the borrower field would be null. So if the book.getBorrower equals null, we return this error code. Otherwise, the book has passed uh, the test for being placed a hold. So we search for the member. If the member was not found, we return an error code, no such member. Otherwise, we create a hold object, put that hold object in the book as well as the member and return this hold placed return code. Search membership is simply checking whether there is a member with this member ID. So we use the member list object to look for that using the search method. Processing the hold. Given a book ID, we need to check to see whether there is a valid hold on this book. And if so, return the corresponding member so that that member can be called to say that um, the book is now available. We search for the book and we get the book object here. Of course, if this book ID is invalid, then there is uh, no uh, book to be book that is on hold here. So if book equals null, we return null. Otherwise we get the next valid hold by getting this um, or calling this method get next hold in book. And if there is no valid hold, hold would be null. There is no member object to be uh, worried about, no member to be called. Otherwise uh, we remove the hold object from both book and member. So you have a valid hold object, get the member object and remove the hold from that. Then remove the member object from the book and we return the member object. Remove a specific hold. That is, this member is supposed to have placed a hold on this book. The IDs are here and we need to remove that hold. So we look for the member. If there is no such member, we return an error code. 
and then we look for the book. If there is no book, we return an error code. Otherwise, uh, we remove the hold in the member as well as remove the hold in the book. So we check that both of these are successful. You can see this question mark. Uh, this is a um, ternary operator. So this uh, statement works like this. If the remove hold method on member return true and remove hold method on book return true, if both of them are true, return this value operation completed. Otherwise we return this value no hold found. Let's skip this. This is a maintenance thing which we want to remove all the invalid holes so we can ignore this method. I'm not going to go over that. This is uh, the issue book method. We need to issue this book with this book ID to this member with this member ID. Uh, look for the book. If there is no book, return null. Otherwise, uh, if um, it has already been issued, return null. Then uh, search for the member. If there is no member, return null, no book issued. If the book could be issued um, to this member, and the member could uh, be issued this book, uh, then we return uh, uh, the book object here. But if any, either one of them is returning false, we return now. Renew book. We renew one book here. There is a loop, but that is in the user interface. The user interface goes through all the checked out books for the member but here we renew exactly one book given it given this book and this member we check for the existence of the book and the existence of the member if either one is a problem return null otherwise you attempt to renew the book for the member by calling the renew method on both of these objects the book object and the member object and if both of them are fine, we return the book object. Otherwise we return now. This returns an iterator to all the books issued to a member. So given a member ID, you look for the member. If member is null, return null, otherwise, get the iterator from the member object. Remove a book, book ID is given, search for the book, and if the book is uh, null, book not found. If the book has a hold, we can't remove it. We return this um, error code. If um, it is checked out, we can't remove it, so we return this error code. And if you are able to remove it from the catalog, return operation completed, otherwise return operation failed. Return book, given a book ID, search for the book. If there is no book, return book not found to the user interface. Um, if otherwise uh, you call the return book on uh, the book to get the member, and if the member is null, the book was not issued, right? We accidentally typed in the wrong book ID. If uh, the call return book on member did not return true for whatever reason, we have a problem. It is unclear why such a problem should exist, but uh, there might be a bug in the system or something of that kind. If the book has a hold, we return that code, book has hold, so that the user interface can display that message and the book can be set aside. Otherwise, uh, if it returns operation completed, it means 
everything went through and there was no hold. This returns an iterator to all the transactions placed by this member on this date. So we look for the member and get the transactions for that member if the member is not now on this particular date. Now, a couple of uh, methods that are not in the design, but they are not very difficult to understand. Um, these are for serialization, that is save, and deserialization, that is rotary. Let's look at serialization first. So we are actually changing the order of uh, methods here. Public static Boolean save. So this is called when it is necessary to save the data to disk. You can, I hope you recall that we had a couple of statements like this to open an object output stream to which we serialize data. So we create first a file output stream and the file name is library data that I chose. And then we have um, an object output stream created on this file using this file and we write out the library. That writes out the catalog, it writes out the member list. When you write out the catalog, you get all the books written out. When you write out all the books, all the holes on all the books would be written out. When you write out the member list, you would write out all the members. The holes will not be written at that stage because the member, the they, they, were, they were all written out by the um, book objects, or it could be the other way. So the holes will be written out only once. Um, then uh, one thing that doesn't get written out by this would be the member ID server. So that is written out separately. There is no reference to this anywhere as a field. So this must be written out explicitly. You see the library has a field to store the catalog and member list for whatever reason we put it they put them there they don't have to be they didn't have to be there but we have it there all right so they automatically get saved but there is no such field called the member id server anywhere in the classes that were written out through this. So that doesn't get written out. So I have to write it out explicitly. And then we close the file and that, that's it. Oh, the one thing I forgot to mention, the transactions would also get written out when we write out the members. The retrieve method is a deserialization, obviously, as I said before. So we open this file, library data, and um, open the object input stream and read that. Now look at this. We wrote out library first. So the first thing that we read would be the library. We wrote out the member ID server next. And to retrieve that, we actually make it the job of member ID server. The reason being the member ID server can then read it and set it set whatever it reads to the instance field, store that in the instance field of member ID server. And then this returns the library object that was read in, so the user interface can refer to this. That's the library class, there's a two string method um, here. 